Hello everybody and welcome back to This is the Police. Someone didn't come to work, someone else, there's a big sale going on today, I can't miss it. No! Bugger off with your bloody sales, you're working. Oh, this police. They know what they want, don't they? Let's get a map, we don't need music at the moment. We'll put it on in a bit. Right, let's have a look at these. Funeral. This man was not only served to the city today, he was buried with military honours. Yeah, scum. And him, snitches. Jack, we hear employees got on camera and said all sorts of rubbish to discredit you and the Freeburg police. We had to put pressure on the TV studio to close down the show. From now on, keep your chatty little monkeys over there in check. And as for Lesriel and Perez, I want them gone by tomorrow. Okay. Inspection. We are concerned about, about the low effectiveness rate of Freebirds find, especially all fried inspectors have been invited to, to visit the department. As Freebird police failed to detect the appearance of a famous serial killer in the city, it's become clear that your detectives simply are not up to the challenge. You have seven days to fully update your detective roster. Find some smart young faces and those other assholes working for you. Keep them as far away from the police station as possible. You'll share. Share it. Okay, so... Hang on, I need to fire... Him. Fire. Fire illegally. Fire illegally. There we go, and we go, you, shift B, you, shift B, you, shift B, you, shift B, and you, shift A. Okay, oh, okay, shift B, okay, there we go. There we go. Now we'll go with some songs. on Chinatown an old man complained that a suspicious guy was lurking around his apartment building he doesn't live here I know the face is one my neighbours this guy is selling drugs I bet it's a false alarm we'll send someone but I reckon it's a false alarm uh, okay investigations Homicide. Yeah, okay. The guy didn't have any drugs. He was only waiting for his girlfriend who had an answer his call since they quarrelled. I oh, knew. Nope. So I mean, I said that before. Crimes. It's wonderful news so far. It's a quiet day. Wow. We don't usually have these quiet days. Oh, well, here we go. A man attacked a sales girl at the flower shop when she refused to give him a bouquet of roses on credit. Eyewitnesses report the man struck the poor girl with a pistol and started to choke her with some package tape. All the while they kept yelling, I just want to treat like a human. Back on YouTube. Go and arrest the lunatic. These officers need for official questioning. This will take a few days, during which time they will be exempt from all duties. Roy Malza Belcher. Okay. Oh, my snitch hasn't said anybody else, has he? No. Send the employees. And then free at a barbecue. Kind of like a bribe. 
Well done, guys. And that man wearing what looks like an explosive vest is standing next to an attraction at the ice arena. The man at the dangerous stuff he dismantled and removed right away. Park visitors and their children are trapped on the ferris wheel and the offenders refusing to leave them. Send them all. Go, 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 go. Sort them lunatics out. Quick, quick, quick. Well done guys, well done. Fantastic news, they did really well there. Suburb, Felipe Santos said that his former business partner together with three armed accomplices broke into his house and demanded money Santos couldn't pay. He keeps all his cash in the bank, so they kidnapped the man's wife and their infant and took them to an abandoned house on the outskirts of the suburbs. They ordered him to return with the money within three hours. His name is Rafael Souza. We created the company three years ago. Business was lousy, so he blackmailed me after the first year and forced me to buy him out for a huge sum of money. Now he's found out that the business turned around and he wants even more. Oh, okay. If they all come back in time, we'll send them. This is mental. Okay. Ah, send them all. Motel. Motel manager saw some people dragging a limp body from one of the rooms. Now they're tearing the room apart, obviously looking for something. I can't send anyone anyway. Let's have a look. Ah, new frames. Oh, this is it. This is what I wanted. That's the one. Let's put that in frames. No, was it mine? Was it? It is. No, 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 no. It was. That. Six pack of beer, that's... Six pack of beer. Six pack of beer. And then... He... Shot her, then shot him, didn't he? Hang on a minute. No, okay, I need one more. I need one more picture. A man with a gun in his hand is smoking on the porch of an abandoned house. Go in the house, the back door. The rest of the man are going inside. Music inside the house is pumping loudly. Three armed men are sitting at a table playing cards, and in the corner there's a front woman with a child. Well done. Well done, guys. That was absolutely wonderful. Well done, guys. I'm pleased with that one. Send the day. Boyd here, and I hope you have a hell of a good reason for calling me in the middle of the night. Um, I'm sorry, Mr. Boyd. I'll, I'll call you back later. No, no, wait. You're the girl from the prosecutor's office. Lana, right? 
Yes, exactly. Oh, I'm so embarrassed, Mr. Boyd. The first thing Mrs. Broom told me about you is that you almost never sleep. I don't sleep too much either, so I thought I'd call you and apologize for last time. <laughs> but it wasn't the last time, was it? Well, I I've been going over our conversation in my mind, and I realized how stupid I sounded. You're the chief of police, and there's a strange girl calling you, saying she'll be the next city prosecutor, just, just to share the news, I guess. I must have sounded crazy. Not so crazy as you imagine, Lana. Uh, when I learned I was going to be police chief, my parents were already dead, and my only friend was working a thousand miles away from Freeburg. Wife and kids were relaxing on a distant island in the middle of the ocean. It took me six hours to get a hold of them. But I had to share the news with someone, or I would have gone mad. All the more because I was surrounded by half a dozen cops who figured they were ahead of me for the job. I figured you were feeling about the same. It's like you're reading my mind. Now I'm like an outcast here. Most of them still think that Mrs. Broom was joking or trying to show her deputies that she's in charge of appointing her successor. But I know it's no joke. Well, for some reason, I didn't doubt it, Lana. That's probably why I'm calling you. <laughs> I know it's selfish. I'm sure your wife isn't too keen on girls calling you at night. My wife and I, well, we're not living together. Maybe I'm the loneliest man in town, and that's why you called, to talk to someone even lonelier than you, huh? <laughs> Lana? Oh, good. You know, Mr. Boyd, maybe I'm an idiot, but until this moment, I didn't realize how lonely I am. Well, you're in luck, because now you can call me anytime. Uh, but if you do, you'll have to call me Jack. Jack? <laughs> It'll take more than one phone call to get used to that. Well, we're not in a hurry, are we? True. Right. Foot hook sent to Freeburg believes homosexuality is contagious. Oh my god. His place. Boutique sale invites stampede. Authentic uniform of German General Carl Wolf discovered in city dump. Mafia loves us. Let's go to work. I'm too tired. I can hardly walk straight. Can I go home? Yeah, we'll come tomorrow. I accidentally brought my bathroom mirror while I was getting ready for work. My dad always said that seven years of bad luck, but I know that's a silly superstition. It'll probably only last seven hours. But it might be good for me to set the day. No. Bloody loony people. Absolutely crazy, these people are. Oh, serial murder. Let's go. A 25-year-old Pamela Cox was brutally murdered in her home. What? Hang on, hang on, investigations. Archive. Why have I only got one? Oh, I need to send two. We got nobody? What the heck? That's my weak salary. Why have we got nobody? Jack, one of our kids climbed up the roof. He's taking talking about suicide. We need to calm him down. At the same time, keep a lid on the situation. Right, I go. I can't send anybody to that. I've got no. Absolutely none. This is ridiculous. We need... We need people. We've got none. Where are they? Where are these people? Oh god, we've got no detectives. Okay, a group of teenagers cleaned out a video rental cash register while the owner, Bruno Boyce, was occupied in the back room. A store employee recognised one of the robbers, a regular at the arcade.
We got nobody to send. Hey, a teenager fit in the description of the Fender is playing along at the arcade. I stick kid in front of him. Watch me until his friend return. Got him. Well done, guys. Riverbank. The sun alarm just tripped at Riverbank Central Branch. It appears that four to six armed robbers have stormed the bank and locked themselves inside. There are at least 15 visitors inside of them, along with a dozen bank employees. Send three of them for now. More detectives. I'm hoping that the. Know, I'm hoping that we get more slots for detectives. Uh, 15 who lived in Spurs into a cafe brought the furniture into Splinton. So, where did the manager and badly beat another young man? A man armed with a gun was at the scene and he fired a warning shot. But the hooligans only laughed and continued their rampage. They're destroying everything in the arena, in the area. Oh, guys. Well done, everyone. I need some else down there, and I can't do anything at the moment. I'm screwed. Intercepted a radio signal similar to the kind used by terrorist cells. They appear to be preparing a terrorist attack on Freeburg. The radio could only catch short snatches of dialogue. It sounds like two cells, codnamed Green Snake and Jupiter, are going to use something they call it the Prophet's Hammer to make a giant explosion. Send them free now, and then we've got free as backup. There weren't any terrorists in the abandoned apartment outside of imminent attack. The signal was transmitted by toy radio. Oh, for what a waste of bloody time. The owner of a small grocery reports that teenage drug pushers are always hanging around the corner outside his shop. I'm tired of calling this in. You cops never do anything. The disappointed man then abruptly hung up. Send two people. For now. City Hall. Jack, what kind of circus are you running over there? Tampering with evidence. Seems your men aren't so low after all. Just be glad that we don't want to see any more hype in the papers about this dentist of yours. We convinced the prosecutors not to investigate your little sideshow, but we did ask the feds to look into you. They'll be going over your correspondence with a fine tooth comb. Bring to the police station. Damn it. Damn them. Boyd. Well, finally, Jack. I've been dying to reach you these past two weeks, but I thought I should give you some time to recover your strength. How are you feeling? Better than ever, Mr. Sand, touched by your concern. 
Well, I hope this doesn't sound too sentimental, Jack. But while you were laying in a coma, I thought about our last meeting many times. It was such a fascinating conversation. You said it yourself. You're a true hunter. Ah, uh, no, Mr. Sand, it was you who said that. Was it? Well, it doesn't matter. What is important, Kendrick told me a lot about you, Jack. But I suddenly realized that he didn't give me the whole story. Why is it you only want half? What are you talking about? Well, why is it you only want to make half? Not a whole million, just half. Not 100,000, but five. It's a very specific figure. How did you arrive at that number? Well, I was looking at a house a couple hours outside of Freeburg, down the river. I figured to buy it, move the family, and set everything up, I'd need right around 500,000. It's not my style to take more than I need. Ah. I must admit, Jack, I imagined all sorts of reasons, but none of them were close to the truth. Are you disappointed, Mr. Sand? No, 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 not with you, Jack. Quite the contrary. I respect you even more. Well, I'm glad to hear that, Mr. Sand. And now if you'll excuse me, I have to go home and get some sleep. Of course, Jack. I just... Twenty-five year old Pamela Cox Light is victim of brutal murder. Rumor Myers favourite stripper found dead in his home. A giraffe is coming to the zoo. Hey a giraffe police station. Okay, we've got something good from all of them. Good morning. Mr Boyd, what's the reason you've called this press conference today's emergency in the Portland announcement alarming news? It's an emergency. Here we go. There's a serial killer loose in the city. The feds have been following him for years. He's smart, he's careful, and he's very dangerous. Our sources tell us that two murders have already happened in the city, and a man nicknamed the dentist is a killer. Why have you been so slow to warn the public? Blame the feds. Blame. Blame the feds. The dentist is part of a federal investigation. I have no choice but to cooperate with the clever boys in the dark suits. The dentist is only one man. Can't the Freeburg Police Department handle one crazy lunar? It's not so simple. The feds have been looking for the dentist across the country for years, but hopefully in our small city, he won't find it so easy to hide. Do you believe it's specifically girls who are in danger? Caution can't hurt. I would advise girls not to wear provocative clothing and not overdo it with the makeup. Do you have any information about the identity of the killer? Hard to say. We have a compass sketch. The dentist is a white male, approximately 50 years old. The secretary will share the identity kit with the press for publication. I appeal to all our residents, if you see someone like this, call the police immediately. Thank you. We're going to get a lot of calls, aren't we? We're going to get so many calls from people that haven't even seen him. Jack Bud, watch out girls, there's a maniac on the loose. The dentist most wanted for decades. Mayor's office arranging grand fireworks in under a city. Okay, I'll watch pot never boils. Okay, we are going to finish this video here. And in the next one, we're going to see how many people phone in panic at the sight of any 50-year-old white person. Because that's exactly what's going to happen. We're going to put them in a panic. So we'll just send the police out willy-nilly. Anyway, we'll, we'll see what we can do. Thank you all for watching, guys. And until next time, take care.